Starting with verse 12 on Isaiah 14, and everybody go, just, just look at me. If you don't have your Bible, just look at me. Some of you in this place and over the internet and stuff, if you, if some of you are so depressed and so down in pain and everything of that nature that you don't know what it is to, to, to overcome right now. I'm just being honest with what the Lord is just begin to impress upon me. But it says here, and this is talking about Satan himself, how you have fallen from heaven, and this is the God speaking, how have you have fallen from heaven? And Isaiah's recording here, so star of the morning, bright uh, light bringer, son of the dawn. You have been cut down to the ground, you have, who have reaped the nations, or rather, I'm sorry, weakened the nations, king of Babylon. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven, I will raise my throne to above the stars of God, I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the remote parts of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud, I will make myself like the Most High God. But in fact, you were brought down to the Sheol, or hell, to the remote recesses of the pit, the region of the dead. And those, if you know, in Revelation talks about he is bound in chains forever in a separate place. Those who see you will gaze at you they will consider you saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook nations, shook kingdoms, who made the world like a wilderness and overthrow its cities, who did not permit his prisoners to return home? Is this the man? They say, they will say, is this the man? Is this the person? Is this the character, in other words, who made the earth to tremble? They will look at him and say this. Because he did all this monster stuff. And, 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 and in essence, because of the fall of man, in the garden he tempted and deceived Eve and Adam. All the stuff came about. They were outside of the covering of God. They were outside of the, the, the uh, covering of, of health and wholeness. All of humanity. And that's what Christ came to do. He came to that we would have life and life more abundantly. He came and destroyed all those works and, and that he could restore what Adam and Eve had in the garden we could have. That we could have the same exact thing. That they lost. But some of you have been complaining have been uh, grumbling, have been uh, stirring all kinds of stuff up because of uh, uh, because of your spirit has been so down and depressed. And God says, "Why that 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 you're this way?" And I want you to take a look at this and consider this that one day soon that, that you're going to see through the lens of heaven as. As the, 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 the Lord is God Himself is saying here, and it, as He sees the enemy, the devil Himself. And God just doesn't write things just for the sake of writing things in the Bible of things to come, the revelation. He, he writes things so that we can know and find out and we can know for sure of what's come about uh, to come ahead of us. And one of the things, beloved, is that that uh, that that the devil is, is defeated, and he's reserved the chains. 
And right here, as it says, those who have been uh, uh, have been uh, on the earth, who have been deceived, that have been under the, this tyrant's rule uh, and reign on the earth, will look at him. Come on, somebody, we got to be awake and attentive because God wants to do something. Or, or we can go through the same junk that we go through. See, God gives you a choice. You want to suffer for the rest of your life? God says, okay, you can suffer. Be outside of my covering and, and, and stay that way. But if you want to hear what the Word of God says, He says, begin to be doers of the Word and not hearers only. You got to do something to get out of the place of uh, uh, where you're at. Where you're at is stinking. It stinks of death because you're in it. Sometimes, beloved, you need to laugh at your situation. You need to laugh at, 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 at not at, not with other people. You need to laugh at yourself. You need to laugh at the devil. You need to, because you need to skip the the eyes of heaven and see through the lens of Holy Spirit. Some of you are like Laodicea Church, beloved. And hear me to this morning because I love you. I want to coach you up a little bit this morning. You can either go through the same junk that you're going through day in, day out, or you can be healed. Some, so some of us out there, we say, we're, Oh, I don't need healing, I don't need nothing. God says, No. Oh, you better wake up and allow yourself to, to, to see yourself through my eyes. And allow your eyes to be cleansed through, through the through the oil of the Holy Spirit and water of the washing of the water of the Word to come clean on the inside. Some of us are damaged goods that God needs to uh, come, or or shall I say, we need to allow God to come and do what He has already done. The whole work of grace. We search for all the things, the answers in the world. We search for the answers on the internet. We search for the answers in, 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 in entertainment. We search for the answers in relationships. Relationships won't do. Entertainment won't do. Uh, busy work won't do. Only thing that will do is giving your whole life to Christ and walking it out. Some of you just sit there and have quit. You know you can quit on God. God wants you to continue walking with Him. But some of us, we have allowed ourselves to quit. And, and it's just like the, the woman, uh, the, the, the concubine, that was with the the uh, priest in, 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 the, in the area of Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, and uh, uh, and he was staying overnight. And the, the wicked men of the night come out and and knocked on the door, and they said, "Well, we want we want this man in here to come out because we want to have our way with him in a perverse way." The priest of the Lord. And the man said, certainly not, I will not allow, we won't allow this. And, and the young woman, unfortunately, went out huh, with these men and into the night with these, went into the town that was with the priest. And she came and she, she almost made it to the threshold of the door. But she gave up and died right there. Some of us are like that. We're at the point that, that you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give up. 
give up on, not on life, but some of you might be given up, want to give up on life, but it's much more than that. You want to give up just on everything else, but to, and, and say forget it. You know, you can't give up on God. You can call it quits. You say, I don't want, I don't want to pursue Him anymore. I don't want to pursue revival. I don't want to pursue anything else. And, and we can sit there and, and, and give up. And, and you know what that's called? And still be in the house of God, still come to church, still read your Bible, still pray, and all that type of stuff. And it becomes just dead religion and works. And God isn't uh, interested, beloved, in our religion. Come on, somebody. God ain't interested in your religion. Because religion stinks of death. <clears throat> That's what Jesus said even when he was at, uh, in Jerusalem. He said, uh, at the temple, he said, you, you, you guys, you think you're, you're, you're alive, but you're not. Talking to the priests of the day, he said, "You think you're alive, but you're not. You're, you're like you're like these tombs out there that uh, they're very elaborate. If you go down to New Orleans, guess what? They they have these elaborate tombs. They're just awesome looking, and, and people have tours of them, and they have stained glass windows and these things. But the reality of it is just like Jesus says." You're just like tombs that are just decorated on the outside, but inside it's just dead men's bones that stink. Just like tombs that are Some of you need to see through the eyes of heaven, and, and, and we're going to get back into the word. We're coming around there. And this is what you need to consider this. And not on your own, through the power of the Holy Spirit to wash your eyes and see, see everything as it is. Not on your own strength, but in the strength of the one who's inside of you, who is greater than anyone else. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The enemy might be in the world, but he's not dominant anymore. Amen. Unless we give him power to dominate over us. And we need to see him as heaven sees him, as, as God sees him, as already been defeated. And I like, <laughs> and I like this. Uh, allow God to show you this uh, as, as the ones who already see him as been defeated in, in chains. It says that those who will see you will consider you and say this, is this the one who made me, uh, uh, tempted me and, 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 and caused me to, to fall into sin? Is this the one who, who, who deceived me and my heart led me away to addiction? Is this the one who, who caused depression in my life? Is this the one who, who tormented me? Is this the one? And it's, it's not like it, it, it's a, a rhetorical question. It's just a, 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 a pondering in the hearts of the children of God. God, people of God say, hey, is this, is this, come on, it's going to be somebody else but this. This, this pimp squeak in, 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 in chains, is this the one who, who caused me all this trouble all these years? Is this, come on, is this the one? And that's what heaven is saying. That's what God is saying here. Is this really the one who did all this stuff in this earth? He doesn't look like much. Because to God, he is not much. Come on, somebody. You need it. It's 
you and I. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. But we got to live in that. And some of us aren't living that. We got to see through heaven's eyes and we got to grasp it for ourselves as a revelation that given by Holy Spirit. Allow Him to come and wash your eyes. The Laodicean churches where the church is now in that and that they say that part of the church huh, would say part of the most of the church would say you know what I don't need nothing I'm okay I don't need no help everybody else needs help but I don't need help I don't need heal I'm fine you're, 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 you're the one who needs help but this is what God says If you don't believe me, read in chapter 3, you would lay out a sin church. Jesus said, you say that you're, you don't have need of nothing. But, but this is what Holy Spirit said to the church. He said, but you're blind, naked, and, and, and poor. You're blind, naked, and poor. In other words, you need everything. You're blind, you can't see that you have a need in your own life. You can't see the reality uh, of, of what the, 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 the fullness of the cross of, of Christ did to you and for you. Oh Lord, have mercy on us. So here it was that what led us to hear the, the dream of that I saw the King of Kings, Jesus, standing in full kingly attire with a crown on his head and a robe that was uh, scarlet in color and uh, arranged with gold and purple uh, linens throughout a gold crown that had scarlet cloth in the middle also arrayed with gold and a gold cross coming out of the other top a pure gold and, and, and his tunic on the inside of it was, was pure white. And his countenance was like, uh, 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 if I could use the term a thousand suns, so bright. And he held a scepter in his hand before the throne of God himself. And he said this, and, and, and he said this while speaking to his bride. And I saw this most beautiful, white, awesome, illuminated gown, rope flowing down, that had gold accents, throughout, pure gold accents throughout it. And it was almost like she was illuminated. It was pure. It was uh, unblemished that she was. She stood before the king, his bride. And I heard him say, I am coming and bringing forth my justice upon the earth. I am causing a shaking and a sifting that I'm bringing down every form of religion and everything that is a debauchery in my eyes. 
everything that is against my word, in other words. I am shaking and bringing it down. And he said, only that which is of me will remain after the shaking and sifting is done. And notice this, beloved, that he will begin to shake, first of all, in his church, because judgment or justice begins in the house of the Lord. And as I said before, that justice means totally different to God than it does to us. Because when we think of just the word justice, we think of the word vengeance or revenge. Or we think of the word punishment. But God thinks of the word justice totally different than you and I. When he says the word justice, brings forth justice, he says it in this way. I want to bring forth revitalization. I want to bring forth renewal. I want to bring forth refreshing. We think about getting vengeance. We think about getting vengeance or revenge on somebody. Somebody does something to you, you want to get justice for them. And you want them arrested, you want them put in jail forever, you want them to be uh, executed. If there was a capital of offense, so to speak, I don't believe personally in capital punishment. And that's for another time and another servant. I don't believe people should be locked up just for the sake of locked up in some penitentiary somewhere then get to do their time and come out and do be more evil than they did when they went in there because they're even more uh, harder, even more uh, uh, resentment in their hearts. What they need is Jesus. What they need is a transforming, the, the transforming power of the Holy Spirit to impact their lives. There's no counseling usually, there's no, no <laughs> work programs to that effect. You wonder why Teen Challenge works so much better than locking somebody up for, for, for the drugs? Because they give them Jesus. They allow the Holy Spirit to work in their lives. And they give them something, an alternative life than, than being hooked on drugs and selling drugs and doing drugs. Eighty-five to eighty-nine percent success rate versus thirty to forty in, in the world's view points of AA and NA and all kinds of A all kinds of A's. <coughs> NA and AA doesn't, doesn't do that Teen Challenge like a ministry does is that Teen Challenge gives them the higher power and says the higher power of Jesus and through the Holy Spirit will transform your life if you allow him. We said we we see this, and, and he's coming back, beloved, after a bride that is without spot or wrinkle, coming back after a church, a remnant. Sad to say that that there was a time that I I, I was I was taken in in, in the spirit in, in the night watches of. I was praying, uh, and I heard in, in this in this dream, in this place. I, heard, I was outside, and I heard I heard the trumpet of the Lord sound, and, and I began to. I was transformed. I was transformed, and I, I, I was kind of interesting because I was. In this, in this structure that was uh, concrete, and I, I, I began to 
go through this concrete and it was like unusual for me. That he allowed me to the place where I came back in this dream and I came back at a moment and, and I looked around and I saw all these people that were church people that I thought were good people but they were left behind left behind it's not about going to church beloved it's not about reading your Bible it's not about praying it's not about telling somebody else about what the Bible says It's about living the truth. It's about walking daily. Walking daily in the truth and being truthful. And our hearts before the Lord. Because all day long we get full the most intimate people that we have around us. Our family, you can even fool your spouse. You can't fool God. God sees and knows everything in our hearts. You can't lie against God. And He's coming to shake. How much will be stand left standing in our lives? You won't be able to run. You won't be able to hide against the shaking of God's beloved. And when he shakes the nations, that he's already began to shake, as we see this, the shaking of, 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 uh, of things in the nations, and we see the corruption. Because God is a righteous judge. God is a righteous, righteous king. And when righteousness comes and invades with his kingdom, things begin to rise up. Things begin to be exalted. And when, you, when things are raised up, you begin to see what's underneath. You look up on you pick up your couch at home and sometimes you see all kinds of stuff. Maybe all kinds of dirt and everything else, but you might find, oh yeah, wow, that's my there's my old wallet. Hey, there's my old cell phone. I thought I lost that. Or hey, there's there's that there's that money I lost. That twenty dollars. You see all kinds of stuff, and, and that's what's happened in the stock market back then it, 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 it's because you know everything might look good on the outside but uh, you know it's just like a car you go to buy a car and oh yeah it's great it's look at this car look look at the paint job oh yeah it's a great paint job look at the inside look at the stereo wow now if, if, a, if a car salesman ever says it has great speakers to begin with. Just walk away. <laughs> but when the person lifts up the hood, you say, no, I want to see underneath the hood. <laughs> if you look under the hood, there's no transmission. That car's no good. And that's what happens when righteous the king comes and begins to shake. Things begin to come up and things begin to begin to be exposed and, and and that's one of the things he's beginning to do and manifest in his light. And we see that in many, a lot, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of the, some of the big time preachers, we see their, their failures. Why? Because we don't see their failures. It's because the righteousness uh, uh, was exposed in their life. It's unfortunately that they didn't come clean before things got out of hand 
and people begin to notice. Because when things can come into light, people can walk from a distance, but when you come by somewhere, <laughs> like look in the light, turn the light on and say, man, there's a lot of dirt in this place. If there is dirt. And he doesn't manifest things and make things manifest and doesn't bring things in, in, into the light to, to bring forth shame and guilt on you. He brings it and makes it manifest in the light so you can, you can come to the truth and experience him as the truth in your life. And don't be deceived and don't deceive anymore. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. The Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6 to 21. Don't let any one of you don't be tricked. And don't let anyone, rather, don't let anyone trick you with foolish talk. God punishes anyone and everyone who disobeys him and says foolish things. And the word foolish things that we're going to find out some meanings of these words in the Greek to bring this out. So don't let have anything to do with any with anyone like that. You used to be like people living in the dark, but now you're people of the light because you belong to the Lord. So act like people of the light. Be the people of the light. Live, beloved, in the light. Because you know what? He is light. And in Him, beloved, John says, there is no darkness. <laughs> Verse 9, and make your light shine, be good and honest and truthful as you try to please the Lord. Don't take part in doing those worthless things that are done in the dark. Instead, show how wrong they are. It is disgusting <laughs> even to talk about, let me say that again, it is disgusting this is what God says, it's disgusting. Turn to somebody and say disgusting. disgusting. Oh, come on, you got to say it like that. Disgusting. <laughs> Even to talk about what is done in the dark. Right here, but the light will show what these things are really like. See, when the man of light comes on and shows, and it shows how, 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 how well, things are really are. Light shows up everything. This is the scripture that says, Wake up from your sleep and rise from death. Then Christ will shine on you. Some people are so asleep with apathy in, in their lives in the church. And Jesus is saying, Wake up and shine. Shine. Some people are so apathetic in the church that you know, and, and God wants to manifest himself through you. God wants to shine himself through you, the church. I had a friend of mine, he's, he's kind of one of those crazy Australian evangelists. And he said, <laughs> he said, I want to, every once in a while, I, I get tempted to take a cat and dead cat and throw it on some people just to see if they'll come back to the cat will come back to life. And if you don't know the story about that, he's talking about when Elijah, when the two robbers threw this dead, uh, they, they killed a man and threw his body into Elijah's, Elisha's grave. And his bones hit uh, his 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 body hit the bones of Elisha and came back to life and walked out of the grave. <laughs> Verse 
Verse 15, and act, and, and act like people with good sense and not like fools. These are evil times, so make every minute count. Don't be stupid. Instead, find out what the Lord wants you to do. I like the word stupid. You know what the word stupid means? It means ignorant, lacking knowledge. Like you don't know anything. That's what stupid is. Don't destroy yourself by getting drunk. Which is a debauchery to God. It's disgusting, detestable to God. You know what, that's the word, the word of God. Some of the, your translation says, don't be drunk, when, where, which is an excess. Don't drink, which is an excess. But in the original Greek, God says it is disgusting and I'm abhorred with it. It is a debauchery to be drunk. It's a debauchery to drink. And to, 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 to your excessfulness. And that can be anything that's contrary to what God considers in His Word to be right. But let the Spirit fill your life. And, and in the Greek it means continue to let the Spirit fill your life on a daily basis. Be filled with overflowing measure of Holy Spirit. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will be so filled with Him and so satisfied that the stuff that God causes, calls as a debauchery, will not be, even be considered in your life anymore. When you meet together, sing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs as you praise the Lord with all your heart. Always use the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. To thank God the Father and for everything. Honor Christ and put others first. Okay, let's go back. Verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. We don't want to be sons and daughters of disobedient sons and daughters. The word deceive means to cheat, beguile, or, 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 to, or, or, or be sneaky and crafty. The word vain means empty, devoid of truth, destitute of spiritual wealth, of one who boasts in the, of their faith as a transcendent possession, yet without the fruits of it. The word logos, the word words, is the word logos, which is the word of God. Let no one trick you. By saying things that are of no spiritual wealth concerning the word of God in your life. There's people that don't be like the enemy. The, the enemy uses the word all the time, but he uses it to, to try to deceive and trick you, to try to sway the words. But that's why you've got to know the word of truth in your life for yourself in an intimate way. That's why we've got to be filled up with the word to overflowing measures. As Psalmist David put it, uh, you know what? Your word have, in Psalm 119, verse 11, says, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not what sin against you, God. Therefore, verse 7, do not be partakers with them. The word partaker means covenant with them. Therefore, 
the word darkness. Don't be partakers of the darkness. It says low light, sight, uh, or rather, I'm sorry, low sight or blindness pertaining to ignorance of respecting divine things and human duties. And the accompanying, un, uh, accompanying ungodliness and immorality together with their conscience. I like this part of the, the, the next part of the definition. Joining in their misery in hell. And I'm not talking about a physical place of going to hell. I'm talking about joining into their, their misery in, in hell. Misery loves what? Company. Some of us in the body of Christ would be better not to hang around with some people. that I had once and it was in a dark place and I was going in and uh, in the dream and I it wasn't me it was somebody else in this dream I was I was it was like a third person dream I don't know if you ever had one of those a third person dream where you're going in and the person sat down and he walked down and it was like this looked like a, a, a almost like a speakeasy uh, back in the day and, and uh, they went down these shady steps down into a basement and it was like a low light like red lights and it was like really dim and there was a table and on one side there was a, a person and this other person sat down at this table with them and and they were uh, they had this uh, the, this bottle and in this bottle the, the one the, the gentleman on the other side the person on this side poured this bottle uh, into two glasses and gave one to, to the person on the other side and I, then I noticed in these glasses were blood. Were blood. Blood is a symbol of covenant. Blood is a symbol of life. And in this dream, in this low light, dark place, there was there was covenant taking place for people to partaking with shady, other shady people that are devoid of truth and, and, and in this dream there, there was the important the glass, but in this dream I saw this person took this cup and just smacked it with the back of their hand and then it shattered all over the place, off the table didn't want to have anything to do with it and that's what God wants us to do, have no uh, uh, do not partake in anything. Do not covet it. Even covet it with with such shady people and make shady deals with people. But rather, <laughs> he wants you to manifest your light. Let your light so shine among men that they might glorify God. Uh, that they might see your good works and glorify God. Your Father, Matthew says. So we don't want to go to the place of making deals with, 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 with deals, so to speak, with the devil. Go into low places, go into dark, low places in our lives. Coveting with people, coveting with things. Making covenants in our hearts that are contrary to what God wants. Contrary to His Word. Verse 8, For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Verse 9. The word goodness means upright of heart and life. 
The word righteousness means integrity, virtue, purity of life, righteousness, uh, con cor cor correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting. God wants us to think right. There's a lot of us that still have stinking thinking that is contrary to the word. And we have thoughts and we bombard us and we allow thoughts to entertain thoughts. And when we entertain thoughts, guess what happens? If we entertain thoughts, we entertain thoughts, and if we entertain thoughts, it comes from up there down into our hearts and it causes us emotional stimulation. And when we get emotional stimulated, guess what? We begin to act on it. And if it's the wrong thing, it's the contrary to the Word of God, guess what? We act on things and it becomes sin because of it's against the Word of God. And if we continue to sin, it becomes habitual in our lives. And that habitual sin leads to what? One thing, to death. Spiritual separation from God. And we often think of Romans 3.23 says that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is, is righteousness is life with Christ, in Christ Jesus. The wages of sin is death. And we often talk about that scripture as, as Romans road to salvation. Or so it was it, did I say three? For all sin that comes short from the glory of God, and then and then six. For the wages of sin is death. That whole Romans road of salvation. And guess what? Paul is talking to Roman Christians. He's saying if you continue, there's a wage for sin, it's death. If you continue in sin, it's, it will cut you off from God. And it's a choice that we make in our hearts. You say you, you can't give up on God? Yes, you can. Verse 10, find out what is acceptable to the Lord. Some of us, sometimes we don't know what is right. Find out what is acceptable to the Lord. It's found in his what word. Proving, test, examine, scrutinize, see whether a thing is genuine or not. Acceptable means well-pleasing. Find out or prove. What is acceptable? What is acceptable to the Lord? What is pleasing to God? What is pleasing to you, Lord? Find out in His Word. Ask Him. Holy Spirit will lead you into what? All truth. That what Holy, that's what Holy Spirit came to do. One of the things to lead you into all truth. Verse 11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful words of darkness, but rather expose them. The word fellowship, to become a partaker together with others, or to have a relationship with a thing. The word unfruitful, bear, not yielding what it ought to yield. Word, an act, deed, or thing done. The word exposed by conviction or being, uh, or bringing it into the light to call to an account. It says, have no fellowship. Don't be a partaker with people or with things that are contrary to the Word of God, that are unbearing or not yielding. Good fruit, <laughs> but rather by conviction, bringing it to the light. Allow your your light to shine in the midst of the darkness that you're you're around. <laughs> oh Lord, help us. 
Gossip is one thing. Let, let, let me use that example. <laughs> If we're around people that we hear gossiping or talking and they come to you and gossip and you, you, you don't say something, hey, we, we're not, I'm not going to talk about this. If you don't speak up and tell them and you're listening, you're actually partaking in that gossip. Come on. So it's rather exposing. Say, so you know what, I'm not going to listen to this dirty joke. I'm not going to listen walk away and say, you know what, that's gossip, we're not going to talk about that. If you're going to talk about somebody, well, let's, let's pray for them right now, let's talk about them when we're on our knees in prayer. Amen. That's just an example. Examples are used to explain what it's talking about, right? Amen. And that's a very pertinent thing because we could all get caught up in gossip. Or how about complaining? <laughs> we complain about the weather or something like that. How do you know that the farmers are not out there praying that, God, I, want, I need some rain for my crops? Much better time things that I, I, I'm guilty. I was guilty of that many times. I could catch myself. God is the one that makes the rain. God is the one that makes the sunshine. God is the one that has the in control of the storms and everything. You want to know why? How Jesus come and said, "Peace be still. Wind stop. Wave stop." over the storms of life. It's controlled over the storm, the weather. I remember the most awesome time I had when the storm was down on the beach. First time I was on the, on the, on the beach by myself. It was almost like just all struck when, a, when there was a storm coming on. I was all by myself. There's nobody out there to begin to rain just lightly on the water. And I saw lightning out on the distance on, on, on the water. I'm like, wow, God, you're awesome. It's one of those moments that, the Kodak moments that you have to take a picture. I didn't have my camera at the time. I was just all struck like, wow. And you see that, and you see the majesty of God and something like that, and it's just all struck. Oh, God, you're so just wonderful. Just be careful. Verse 12, For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. The word shame is dishonorable. Verse 13, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. The word manifest, of course, we know to make visible or to know, to be plainly recognized or thoroughly understood. The word light the light of truth and its knowledge together with its spiritual purity assumed with it. He's saying when it comes to the light, it will be exposed, be made manifest, it will be seen. If it's in the dark, and <laughs> if it's in the dark, you can't see anything. Hallelujah. But when you turn the lights on, you can see things, right? If you lose something on the floor, you turn on some more lights and you can see stuff. <laughs> and you can see all the dirt and dust and everything else that you, you didn't get underneath the table wherever you're looking for the thing. Like, oh my gosh, look at that, oh my crud, I didn't get it with a mop. How did I didn't get that? Why? Because, you begin to see because the light is manifest on it. 
verse 14, therefore he says, Awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The, verse, the, 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 the phrase, you who sleeps, refers to one that yields to sloth and to sin. Arise to stand up, to get awakened, and take a stand. Dead, destitute of life. Because they have given their life to trespasses and sins. Devoid of doing right things. Devoid of uh, the, uh, the power to do what is right. Inactive, inoperative. I mean, it doesn't effect really operate. It's defective. We buy something and it doesn't work the way to the specification we say it's defective and we send it back. That's what it's talking about here. See that you walk circumspectly, verse 15, not as fools, don't be like a, don't be a fool. Don't be a fool, but be wise. Work cir walk circumspectly, exactly, accurately. Walk diligently. Wise, forming the best plans and using the best means for their execution. And if you don't know how to do things, it's, it's good to ask for wisdom, right? Isn't that what James says? He who lacks wisdom, ask for the Lord who liberally gives wisdom to you. Who need it? Verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. How many know the days are evil? It's, it, it, it's something God says and it's not a big, wow! There's something I really needed to know, but it is really, we need to know it. We know the days are evil, but God has to say it to us anyhow. Hey, the days are evil. Meaning it's time to wake up to take a stand, to get out of your sin, get out of your slumber, walk in the light, and be mad and make, make that light manifest through, through our lives. Be the bride of Christ without spot or wrinkle by the power of the Holy Spirit. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. The word redeeming to make wise and sacred use of every opportunity for doing well. So that zeal and well-doing are as it were the purchase money by which we make time our own. God purchased us on the cross, redeemed us, bought us. We are not our own. Redeeming the time. What does Hebrews say? Lay ever lay aside every weight and every sin that easily besets us. And he's talking about what running the race. Lay every weight. And beloved, weight is not necessarily sin. It says that's why he says, let every weight and sin. It easily besets us, laying it down. There's things in our lives that are not necessarily uh, the best for our lives. In essence, the plan and purposes of God for us. Is there things God's telling you to lay aside and to quit, to, to, to stop? That are not necessarily sin, but there are things that weigh you down. And no, I'm not talking about your spouse either. <laughs> Come on, it's a joke, you can laugh. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Lay every weight 
and sin that easily besets you. But it says, redeeming the time. The time is, uh, the time here is not a chronos moment of time. Chronos means a period of length of time, like your, your months or your, your, your clock. It goes hours and seconds. It's not talking about, but what it means here in the Greek, it is a kairos moment. Kairos moment is an opportune or seasonable time, the right time with specific moment, a divine appointment moment, a divine opportunity that God brings up in your life. He says, now is a kairos moment. Take up, take these opportunities, seize the opportunity, the Kairos moment. For the days are evil, full of labors. And that this is what evil means, full of labors, annoyances, hardships, bad nature or condition. How many knows that there are, 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 are labor pains now? There's annoyances, there's hardships. Verse 17, therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. The word unwise means senseless, foolish, without reflection or intelligence, acting rashly. Know what, understand what the will of the Lord is. You know what the will of the Lord is for your life by intimate relationship with Him in His Word intimate relationship with Him time-wise, in, in worship, in prayer. And that's not just coming to out of obligations because you want to, you, you, you just got to, you, you can't spend another moment away from Him. Because He's the love of your life. And verse 18, And do not be drunk with wine, which is, which is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. There's two commands here. First of all, he says, don't do anything that's displeasing to me, that I abhor. That is a debauchery to me. It doesn't matter if you're uh, 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 talking about alcohol or it's talking about any type of drugs or if it's talking about being a workaholic or being anything that has become God in your life, idolatry or adultery or anything to that nature. It's all displeasing. He counts it as debauchery. But he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's in the Greek is a, uh, a present continuous tense in the Greek, which means be being filled every single day. Be being filled. Be filled today, be filled tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and for your entire life with Holy Spirit and fire. There's a gentleman by the name of A.A. A. Allen. I don't know if you ever heard of him. And there's a Jonathan, uh, um, John G. Lake as well. There's other people. But John G. Lake, he was a successful businessman in Chicago. Quit his, uh, quit his business when he got saved and began preaching the gospel. And uh, there's many miracles begin to, to happen in his life begin to, to flow through his ministry beginning. But he was praying for the fulfillment of what God said of uh, being filled with the overflowing measures of Holy Spirit and fire. And he's talking about one day, and he's talking to his friends, and if you ever get a chance to read any of the old time, they call them generals of the faith. And, and there's, there's, there, there's a book out called God's Generals. I don't use his name. I mean, 
promote most of the stuff. But it's also it's a good reading if you want to get it on the side. But the most important book that you need to read is faith, the faith book. <laughs> faith book and the Bible. But John G. Lake, he was, like I said, a businessman. But he would do, there's some powerful things in his life and he would talk to his friends and said, you know what, there's something missing. I, I just need to be filled to just this empowering of the Holy Spirit to overflow in measures. And they were like, what? There's a lot of stuff going on in your life, you know. And they probably thought he was crazy, but one night when he was gone over to pray for this individual, and, uh, and, and, and he prayed for this individual, and he felt like a bolt of lightning, and he, 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 he fell across the floor, I mean, the room, into a chair. That's how powerful it was. It came through this gentleman, come down like zzzz, power of the Holy Spirit hit him and knocked him back. You know, like if you ever got seen anybody got electrocuted or whatever, they they power just knocks you down. But that's what happened to this individual, John G. Lake. And he said he, he began to shake like he was electrocuted in, in this chair for 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 what seemed like hours. And he knew from that moment he was. Or uh, he, he received that 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 fullness of, of, of Holy Spirit and fire, and he continued to do that on a daily basis. And 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 this is what this is what uh, uh, John Wesley. I had to think. I'm thinking of Charles Wesley, but John Wesley said this. And people and, and the, script, the the critics scrutinized him, and the journalists scrutinized him, and he would always preach on Holy Spirit and fire all the time, mention that that is that is important. People would shake, literally shake, under the fire of God, just literally shake, burning under the fire of God, Holy Spirit in his in, in his meetings when he was preaching and everything. And then how we have come so far from that. And I'm not saying, saying you know, all these emotions are, are of God, but you know, you know, something like like when uh, uh, Jonathan Edwards preached the, the, that famous sermon, "Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God," and he spoke. If you ever heard him spoke, it was uh, on a monotone voice, and it would probably put everybody to sleep. But the, the, when he spoke the words. Uh, the famous sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. He spoke like this, in a monotone voice. But everybody in the service, the people, uh, almost everyone would come up and receive the Lord. And if, if people, when he was preaching that, beloved, it said, it, 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 it quoted, it stated that people actually felt like a spider on, on, on a spider's web dangling over the fires of hell itself. That's how real it was for people. God just opened up the heavens and, and, and people experienced that. So we need to be filled with the fullness of Holy Spirit to the point where the fire of God, the passion of God just burning inside of us, that people see Jesus and they feel the presence of the Holy Spirit to the point that their, your light shines. And, and beloved, and if people are not living right, your life is a conviction, just a convicting conviction to their lives. Because of the way you're living, you don't even have to say a word to them. I've had people in my life and, and I looked at it and I said, what in the world are you talking about? If people wouldn't hang around with me in, in, in college and stuff because they were they didn't like to be they didn't because they said this uh, through the other people through the grapevine. I'm not patting myself on the back or anything. But they said, hey, wait, they don't want to hang around with you because you can convict them. I do what? Because it's not me, it's Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is in you. That light. See, the light, if they're not, if people are not doing things the right, don't, don't be concerned that people don't want to hang around with you. 
Sometimes they don't want to hang around with you because you, you, you convict them of, of sin. That's a good thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. So let your light so shine them, that they might see your good works, your God works, and glorify God, your Father. But what I'm saying here, be to the place where you're so on fire for Him. Every expression that comes out, of, out, out from you, just as a burst huh, of life, a burst of light to everyone. Because we are the bride of, if you, beloved, are fully surrendered to Him today, you are the bride of Christ. You are his bride, the one standing before the king. The king who is about to do some shifting, some sifting, some shaking. That which only remains will be of him. Because he's going to do some shaking, some sifting in, in, our, in the church. He's going to do some shaking in heaven. <laughs> Uh, some shaking and baking. He wants to shake and bake. Oh, by the fire of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Burn out all the wood, hay, and stubble that only remains is precious. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. Because he's longing. And this is where it all comes down to, beloved. And we'll take it up next week, talking more about the bride. <laughs> it all comes down to, I don't know where else it's going to, glory to God, I'm on board. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Jesus. wants us to, to shine just to be his bride here on earth. Oh, there it is. Thank you, Lord. In Romans chapter 8, it says that all creation is groaning, is longing, is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. There is going to be a second coming. I always come down to this as there's going to be a second coming before the coming of the Lord. There's going to be a coming of Jesus before He comes in the clouds. And ask God to manifest His presence through you and I so that Jesus would be revealed on the earth. That's why He's shake and bake. <laughs> so allow Him to shake and bake your life. Holy Spirit fire come and burn, Lord. Holy Spirit fire now, and Jesus, come and burn. Come and have your way, Holy Spirit. Come and have your way in our lives. May you come and have your way in our homes, Lord. Come and have your way in, the, in our church, but mostly in our hearts, Lord God. You come to shake. Lord, come and shake. Come, holy fire, and set us free, Lord. In Jesus' name, burn out every everything, all the dross, all the wood, hay, and stubble, Lord. The only thing that will remain will be that which is of you. Your purposes, your plans. Come on, beloved, we're praying right now. Allow him to do a work in your heart. Allow him to do a work in your mind. Ha 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 ha. Don't allow, the, everybody says, the battlefield of the mind. There's somebody that said that the higher the level, the bigger the devil. The, the higher the level, the greater, the greater, the greater the glory of God is. 
and you don't have to worry about the devil. <laughs> Just be concerned about God himself and allow God to deal with him as he already dealt with him on the cross 2,000 years ago. Some of you need to get the eyes of heaven and eyes of, of, of the Lord himself and look to the lens of heaven and see the enemy as he will be already bound up a little pipsqueak. Uh, can't do a thing to you. Ha, 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 ha. It's, uh, it's as if there's a, uh, uh, and I use this illustration a lot. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who heard it, well, I'm not going to apologize for saying it again, so just bear with me. There was a, a family that was going on a vacation to Disney World, and they were in a car, and this, this he got into the car and the little girl in the back seat began to scream as this bee was flying around her and, and the reason why she was screaming is because she was deathly allergic to bee stings. And this bee was going around and, and, and the father up, up in front was, oh, oh be, 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 just be still, honey, be still, be still, and uh, be quiet, don't, don't get all, don't get the bee all around uh, and, and stuff, and, and the bee flew up front and kept on flying up front, and, and they tried to wind down the window, the window wasn't, you know, that didn't work, and the bee was still in there, so he waited till it got on the dash, and he took his hand and, and, and skipped it up in his hand and he was clenching this bee and he was waiting for the inevitable this, and it stung him. And as you know, some bees, they, when they sting you, the stingers, they can't sting you again. It's done. And it will ultimately end in their death. And he let this bee go. And went back, he was flying around, buzzing around again, and then the little girl goes, Oh, please help me! Crying and all stuff, and she goes, and the dad pulls the car over and turns around and says, Honey, that's okay, the bee is not going to harm you. And she was like, Oh, you don't know how you know it's going to sting me. He goes, as he said this, as he showed his hand. He said, No, it isn't. See? I have already taken the sting <coughs> out of the bee. It cannot sting you anymore. It's about to die. See, that's what Jesus done on the cross. As he shows you his hands and the nail prints and the holes in his hands. It says, no, my beloved, he can't harm me anymore because of the holes in my hands and feet. I have already taken the sting out of death. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Has been swallowed up and taken by Jesus Christ himself. There is no more poison. He's active but not dominant anymore. Because what he done to you and for you on the cross. Aren't you so glad because of him? Jesus. Hallelujah. Our living hope. Lord, uh, cause this word to burn inside of our hearts. Holy Spirit and fire all throughout this week as we oh intimately come before you, your robe, Lord God, as the King. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray a blessing on everyone here. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you, be uh, uh, and gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. Grant you his peace, shalom, nothing broken, nothing lacking. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And everyone said, Amen and Amen.